Hey guys, uh, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to be showing you how to add some style to your website using CSS. Now you know by looking at um, HTML that you can add some style using HTML. Um, I'm going to show you a real basic looking HTML page here. Um, and that looks fairly plain, but you know that you can use uh, BG color and font attributes to add um, style and color to the page. However, one of the uh, disadvantages is that if I'm going to add a color, a background color to say like paragraphs, I have to do it to each paragraph element individually. Uh, and when your site's pretty big, that gets uh, problematic over time. Same thing happens if you want to use a font, right? Um, say you want to change fonts depending on like every other paragraph needs to have a certain font. Then what you end up doing is you end up with a big spaghetti mess of font um, attributes. Not what you want. So I'm going to show you how to add a CSS uh, reference inside of your HTML page and then use CSS to select things um, in a bit more sane fashion. So let's take a look at the uh, HTML file I'm providing you with. What you'll see is um, I've already put this link element inside of the head. What that does is it tells the HTML file to look for a CSS file um, on your hard drive. So I've got link, rel equals uh, style sheet. That's telling the browser that it's a style sheet, and the type is text slash CSS. And the href is the really important part. That's going to change depending on what you call the CSS file. For today, I just want you to create a CSS file called sample.css. And it's going to be in the same location um, as the .html file that I'm going to have you download. So here it is, sample.css. So that's what I called it. So what I need to do now is I need to create a sample CSS file. So I'm going to go up here to New. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to File, Save As, and then call it sample.css. And the Save As type is going to be, let's see, where is it? Cascade Style Sheets file. So it's on my desktop, which is where I saved my .html file. I hit save, and now I've got a sample.css style sheet. Now you see if I refresh the page, nothing changes. And that's because I haven't actually added the style yet. So how do you actually um, apply style to a page? Well, there are a few different ways, and I'm going to tell you a bit about each of them. The first way is uh, through an element selector. What an element selector does is it says, I want to apply the style to every element that matches uh, the name that I type. So if I wanted to apply it to all of my H2s, I would come over here to sample.css and type H2. And then a curly bracket, a left curly bracket, um, and a right curly bracket. And in between, I'm going to type the name of a property, something that I want changed. In this case, the first one I'm going to introduce is background color, which is background dash color. Then I put a colon in there, and then the name of a color I want to use. For today, I am going to use teal. And I always put a little semicolon after the thing so that I let it know that I'm done with that particular line. So now I hit save, and I go back, and I refresh. And you'll see that each one of my H2s now has this background color, uh, which is really easy, right? Let's say that I want all of my headlines to have the same background color. Well, what I do then is I put in all of the elements that I want to be affected by this style. I'm going to do H1 comma h2 comma h3. So long as they're separated by commas, all of them will work. I hit save and refresh, and now I've got all of my h's with um, a teal background. Perfect, right? Really easy. So that is the basic way you use an element selector. That is going to be the widest range, or the, the largest affecting um, selector. Next up, we're going to use class selectors. Now, what class selectors are is um, you can specify a class in any type of element. So if you look in the HTML file I gave you, you'll see that um, in the first element below the headline um, in every uh, section, under every H2, I put class equals opener. So here is a paragraph element with a class equals opener. Here is an unordered list with in the opener class. And here's another paragraph with class equals opener. 
So all three of those are in the same class. And you can put, you know, everything in the same class if you want to. Um, but let's say, like, you want every other paragraph to be styled a certain way, then you would put every other paragraph in that, um, in a particular class, in class equals, say, uh, alternate. And then it would be affected. Or let's say you want to have one table look a certain way uh, and have it look the same way as a paragraph. Then you would put both of those in the same class. So how do I select using um, a class? Well, first I type a period, and then I type the class name. So in this case, it's opener. So dot opener, and then my curly bracket, and then background color is um, cyan, and then close, and hit save, and I come back here. Oh, sorry. I go to the browser and refresh, and you'll see now that paragraph, this unordered list, and the other paragraph are all in cyan, exactly the way I want it to. <clears throat> now, let's say that I only want to treat certain uh, members of a class a certain way. Like, let's say I only want the paragraphs, um, the paragraphs in the opener class to be affected. Well, then first I type the element name, P, and then I do my dot opener after. So I say, all paragraph elements with the opener class get affected. And if I go back here and refresh, you'll see that the unordered list loses its style. So that's a basic rundown of how you use the uh, class selector. Now finally, there's a really specific one called an ID selector. Now, whereas you can use classes, the same class in multiple places, IDs have to be unique. So right down here in this paragraph, you'll see I gave an ID of closing. Um, I can only use that ID once. If I uh, want to use the ID more than once, what I actually want is a class. But there might be times where you want to have like three different sections of your website and have them each have their own ID so that you can only affect that section. So how do you use a, an ID selector? Well, uh, just like uh, with the class selector, it's got its own unique um, character, but instead of a dot, it's a pound or a hashtag. So I type hashtag and then the name of the um, ID, in this case, closing, and then do background color is uh, navy, and then save, and go back here, and you'll see just this one got affected. Now, what you may have noticed, or what you, I want you to notice, is that um, these things work in a certain order. Like all of these, the uh, the P element, the dot opener, and the uh, closing ID all reference paragraph uh, tags. So right here, if I change um, this background color, I'm saying that all paragraphs should have background color of teal. But then the opener um, the opener class should have a background assigned, and then the closing ID should have a uh, background color of navy. So these should also be affected by this, right? Well, not really. Um, what you'll see is that even though I said that paragraphs should all be teal, only this middle one here actually shows up as teal. And that's because with CSS, um, IDs take precedence over classes and elements. Uh, and then classes take precedence over element uh, selectors. So you have to make sure if you create a, an ID selector and a paragraph selector and you're thinking, why isn't my, paragraph, or why isn't my element selector uh, working? It might be because your class or ID selectors are taking pre uh, precedence. So keep an eye out for that. Now that you've got a basic rundown on how the selectors work, uh, I'm going to give you a few more properties that you can use to change um, your CSS. Let's start with uh, color. Color will change the text color uh, on, in your document. So if I do that and refresh, you'll see that it is all white. Now you'll notice it changed the text to white everywhere. That's because in my uh, ID selector and my class selector, I don't specify a text color. So this is going to affect um, everything that isn't already specified in my other um, selector types, okay? 
other than uh, text color, I can also change where the text is located. So I can say text align center. Um, right will also work. Left will work, but it's the default. So now my text is nicely centered in the middle. Um, I can also change the height and the width. So if I say height is 200 pixels, then you'll see that um, the height has changed. And if I say width is 200 pixels, once again, the width changes and it kind of sm smashes it down so that it's unreadable. So that's obviously too small. What I might want to do instead, uh, I can specify uh, exact values or I can say a percentage of the screen should be um, taken up by these elements. So there, now I've made it 50%. And if I drag the browser left or right, it's always going to stay at 50%. Okay? So that's height and width. Um, I've also got background images. Rather than using a background color, I can actually say I want a background image. So let's get rid of this in closing instead. We'll go background image, and then I'm going to specify a URL, which means that if you want to, you can use an image on the internet instead of on your hard drive. But I'm going to use one on my hard drive that is also in the same location as my .html file. I'm going to call it Grant. It's called grant.jpg. And I'm going to save it, and you'll see that, uh, look at that, there's Grant's face. Now, uh, unfortunately, that's too small to see the whole thing, so I'm going to save it and refresh. And oh, that's even worse, isn't it? So I'm going to have to change the height to 400 pixels. And save. And there. Now, you'll notice that Grant's picture is repeating. If you take a look at the W3 Schools uh, site, for, um, for background image and CSS, you'll see that there are different ways to change the way um, it handles images. If they're too small, for instance, you can say, like, I want the background size to be 100% of the width and 100% of the height of the uh, element. And then, bam, now it is uh, the full size, not repeated at all. Oh, one more thing I want to show you before we go. Um, W3Schools has a nice um, little reference section in CSS that will tell you the different color names that you can use. So here, CSS color name shows you the 140 different names that you can use for colors. Um, instead of if your name doesn't, or if your color doesn't have a name, or if you don't want to use one of these colors, you can also uh, use the hex value, which is listed here. Um, and let's say I want to have a purple, but not this particular shade of purple. I can click Mix, which I did right here, and then say, OK, maybe I want this particular shade of purple. And I copy in the, uh, the hex name over into my HTML file. Uh, and rather than having background color equals teal, I have it equal this little hashtag number and uh, letter combination. I go back to CSS intro and refresh, and there's my color. So those are some basics for using CSS. Uh, experiment first with the HTML file I provided you, and then uh, try using either the uh, file that you generated to, to hold your data, or try using the CSS Zen Garden site and see what you can come up with.